What's up, guys? This is Hulu Heat. That's Machine Mr. GMSI himself, Brian Cage. If you're watching, True Hulu Heat. Who better? Nobody. This is the knockout artist, Chris Hero. And if you're looking for some true heel heat, you better listen to the boys. Hello, hello, hello. It is me, it is me, your true heel phenom, SP3. We are back once again with another review, this time reviewing NJPW Soul 2024, day one, the start of the NJPW Soul Tour. I thought we were not going to have to do anything, but boy, oh boy, was this a noteworthy show. So, of course, I am back once again with the baby MC of the past, present, and future of New Japan Pro Wrestling here on the True Hill Heat YouTube channel. It's your boy, Jay News. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It's your good brother, Jay News. Back at it again here with the one and only SP3, True Hill Heat. Talk of that New Japan goodness, as we, as we like to do uh, whenever we get a chance to do it. <laughs> so that's always, uh, that's always a plus. Here talking that New Japan soul that happened this past Sunday, uh, if, I, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, so yes. one hell of a card that went down. Um, lots of interesting things, title changes, and all that jazz announcements that took place <laughs> on Seoul. So, uh, definitely a lot of things we have to cover and touch base on today. A lot of things for us to unwrap. This was the start of the Soul Tour, the first show coming off the heels of Dominion and the Despy Invitational. If you haven't already, check out our Dominion review with Ars2 and Sanal. Check out my Despy Invitational review if you are a Patreon backer, patreon.com forward slash True Hill Heat, the best place to support us when we are not here on the channel. You're getting this a little bit later in the week. But we appreciate y'all for watching. If you're watching on demand, you're watching on the premiere, we appreciate you either way. Remember to show your appreciation back. The simplest way possible is by dropping the thumbs up on this video. You can also share this video with all your wrestling fans, friends, and family on all your favorite social media platforms. If you're new to the True Hill Heat YouTube channel, hit that subscribe button. Hit the bell to stay notified for all the great content here. And, of course, you could sound off if you're watching the premiere in the live chat. We're not here live. This is a pre-recorded video. But, of course, you can sound off and interact with anybody else that's watching during the premiere. Or if you're watching us on demand, you can leave your comments down below. Let us know what you thought of NJPW Soul. And more importantly, this was a big show with, I believe it was five title matches on the show, as well as the big announcement for the G1 Climax 34 tournament, which included the announcement of the 18 participants that have already been confirmed, as well as the brackets for the play-in tournament for the finals two spots to complete our 20-man field. So, Jay News, I hit sure. you late in the week about this because this show had a lot of buzzworthy things, but I know you're a busy man. You weren't able to see everything on the show, but what is kind of your overall thoughts on everything you heard coming out of the show before we get into breaking down what went down? With everything, with everything that I was able to catch up on, um, watching the different clips and, and just watching the, the New Japan YouTube and, and their social medias and stuff like that, um, a couple of things stick out to me. Um, one, shout out to Hanare for the win, because uh, that to me was super unexpected. <laughs> and so shout out to Hanare for doing that. Um, I think every member outside of Francesco Akira is currently a champion in the United Empire. So shout out to the team. For, for doing big things. Um, secondarily, uh, the coronation of El Desperado uh, was definitely well-deserved um, in that cage match against show. Uh, so props to those guys for doing what they did. And the biggest piece of news, which you did not want to ruin for me earlier in the week when we spoke about this. Uh, yeah, so don't say it. Don't say it. We're gonna, we're gonna go, we're gonna go into the G one. Don't worry. But that, but, that, but that piece of news was definitely because you, 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 you didn't tell me what it was. You told me go, go look for it. I went to go look for it, and without even trying to look for it, it was the first thing that appeared on my timeline when I opened up the the, the, twi the Twitter feed. And I said to myself, well, this is interesting news. 
Um, and, and I also thought it very interesting to, to, to what you were uh, alluding to before when it came to the brackets for the playing tournament, how it's a 12 man bracket. And I thought it was just going to be like some quali- like some uh, some some like two or three qualifying matches or whatever the case is, and then we'll get on with it. But it's basically a tournament before the tournament or whatever. So that's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, so we're going to get to see that uh, happen and transpire before the G1 takes off. And uh, yeah, yeah. As per soul, a lot of different uh, a lot of different uh, things happened with the title matches and stuff like that. I think they they uh, they wove in some interesting story points here and there. During uh during certain matches, so I think it's about that time, SP3, uh, for us to yes. get into the weeds, as they say. <laughs> so NJPW Soul uh took place on Sunday, June sixteenth. Uh, I I I always botch the the pronunciation of wherever they are, so I'm not even going to try this time. But uh, it wasn't a very high attendance. It was actually half. Of the attendance that uh they had the last time they were in this city which was during the uh new beginning tour when they made a venue with naito versus sonata naito and sonata were bigger draws than uh despy and show unfortunately here but it was a very a very good crowd with those that were in attendance uh the pre-show saw our newest young lions which mm-hmm. is i'm gonna try my best here masatoro yasha yasada and yeah. Dapi Nagaya. <laughs> I hope I said that right. But uh, these guys, man, it gave me the old vibes of the Young yes. Lions. They had a very spirited affair. They were going at it. They are fresh Young Lions because you could tell by the fresh uh, buzz cut that they got when they first go to the end, to the No Gay Jojo. Uh, they already had it here, and they showed a lot of fire late. The match ended, of course, in the Young Lions special specialty a 10 minute time limit draw as uh i believe it was masatoro uh had the uh boston crab on daki and uh daki was able to survive and uh not tap out before the time limit draw but these two guys i think i think they got a bright future we're going to see more and more of them this was kind of their introduction to the new japan fans uh kind of tell everybody like uh, kind of your usual kind of expectations when you see these new young lions being the new japan uh stalwart expert that you are um i'm at the, at the end of the day when it comes to when it comes to the young lions it's always it's for folks who don't know it's to what sp3 said it's your introduction to a couple of newfound wrestlers some guys make it to the main roster quote unquote some don't uh over history uh you don't necessarily uh you don't necessarily get to see them all become main characters on the on on the main card some guys uh drop off or unfortunately we've had untimely deaths occur over the last few years so uh things of that nature so just keep an eye out on these 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 two guys in particular are younger guys uh not necessarily in their mid to late 20s they're in their early 20s so these guys have a lot of uh uh, have a lot more to go. Uh, a lot of what we'll see in the coming weeks, maybe year plus, is just a lot of your uh, basic wrestling maneuvers, a lot of slams, a lot of uh, uh, basic wrestling holds, you know, drop toe holes and freaking uh, wrist locks and headlocks and things of that nature. The Boston Crab, as as P3 said, and they and and, and whatnot. So uh, you'll see that a lot of what they. A lot of what New Japan looks for in this is just garnering these young men the experience in the ring um, with numerous, numerous matches. And at the same time, understanding as to what their tokon, the fighting spirit is like uh, so that the fans take to them uh, as individuals as they continue to grow and evolve their characters but not necessarily their move sets the move sets themselves they'll they'll evolve over time with excursions and things of that nature and then they'll come back with brand new presentations in about a year or two uh so uh right now we're just getting the the nuts and bolts the foundation of these two young men uh as uh, as they are the new young lines of the new class uh i believe joining uh murashima and shomakato uh, as the uh, as the rest of the young line uh, crop for this particular class. So the opening matchup on the main card saw a multi-man action. You know, Jay News' favorite guys. Uh, as he had United Empire finally whole again. 
after Francisco Akira was injured in the best of Super Juniors. He made his comeback here in the opening contest, teaming with the rest of United Empire, Colin Newman, uh, Great Okan, Jeff Cobb, and TJP, who is officially now the leader after his performance in the best of Super Juniors tournament as they face the Hontai Young Lion combination of uh, Mor Morishima, uh, Am I saying that right? Murashima, yeah, uh, Katsu Murashima, uh, Sato, uh, Satoshi Kojima, Shomo Kaito, uh, Tamaki Honma, and Tomohiro Ishii. So a rekindling of the uh, show stealer from Dominion between Jeff Cobb and Ishii. They went at it a bit in this matchup. The Young Lions look fine at points in this one, but there wasn't anything to kind of sink your teeth into here as this was a showcase for United Empire. Finally, whole again as Francisco Akira pulled out the victory with the knee knees, the fireball knees to, uh, I believe it was Kato who took the fall here. United Empire whole, TJP's got his United Empire flag as the official leader now. What do you think about this uh, new new era for United Empire as uh, it seems Great Okan and Jeff Cobb have accepted TJP as the leader? By the way? I mean... I think the writing was on the wall the entire time, right? Because he 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 basically voiced his desire to be the leader of the United Empire, and you know, you know, the majority of the team wasn't necessarily very accepting of it at first. But as you said, now with uh, with Okan and Jeff Cobb uh, being who they are, uh, not necessarily falling in line, but just understanding as to where TJP wants to go with all this, um, and TJP. Basically, in my not from a not from an age standpoint, but from but for years in the ring, he is the he is the elder statesman of the group. Uh, so yeah. uh, definitely uh, a moment where recognizing TJP as the leader of this group is uh, it's different, it's new, and I want to see as to where this goes for him. Um, hopefully, they're 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 able to take this to different heights than uh, than when will. Osprey, that is, uh, was the leader of the uh, or the head, should I say, of the uh, of the United Empire. Yes, I'm, I'm liking liking this new version of uh, United Empire match itself. Wasn't much to it, so I just gave it two and a half stars. Uh, next up, we had some tag team action as it was just five guys, Doki and Tai Chi. Uh, uniting here after Doki's performance in the Best of Super Juniors, making it to uh, the uh, block finals and then the uh, semifinals as they went against House of Tortures, Ren Narita, and Yoshinabu Kanamaru. Kanamaru, of course, a former member of Just Five Guys. Uh, this match kicked off with some uh, House of Torture isolating of Doki by ut utilizing their typical offense and shenanigans, of course. Once Taichi tagged in, he reversed the momentum until an illegal strike opened the door for another stint of HOT control. But of course, it was uh, a it was uh, just five guys who made their comeback. Doki Choki prompted Narita to hit the ring with a push-up bar. But after a short uh, scuffle between the two sides, Kanamaro attempted the miss to Doki. Doki was able to cut him off, punching him so the whiskey went in the air. He uh, rolled him up. For a in a seatbelt pin similar to Wheeler Yuta to pick up the victory in this one. Doki picking up a significant win as it gained him momentum for what would happen later in the show. But just five guys picking up the victory here. What have you thought about this recent push for Doki since the uh, best of Super Juniors? A, he was probably the most surprising out of the four that made it to semifinals. And what do you think about him getting the win here? They've been they've been driving this Doki chain. They've been diving, they've been driving this Doki train for the last two years now, man. It's it's about that time that Doki become uh one of the uh one of the newer stalwarts of the New Japan uh pro wrestling uh junior division. Uh Doki's a a big time fan favorite. So at the end of the day, I think this is just a good push for him in that particular direction. And secondarily, like uh the in-ring work never falters with Doki. At first, it was a little. At first, a couple of years ago, when he first joined, it was a little. It was a little funny. It was a little funky, but now it's now it's cleaner. Uh, now it's much not now much more much more refined, and uh, like I said before, fan favorite and, and and folks really latch on to Doki. And you know, we all love the Doki Choki. So at the end of the day. <laughs> 
it's just one of those things. And where, doing your best Gino Gino Gambino impersonation when you say it. Joking, 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 joking. So, you know, um, definitely something that they uh, how do they how, they they, they telegraph this a bit here at the beginning of the show as well as you as you said as to what was uh what was going to happen later on in the show with doki uh but good momentum went here for doki uh, to get the pin and uh yeah bigger and better things down the line we shall see we shall see for sure uh we got more tag team action on the show this is new's favorite consecutive tag team matches on a new japan show uh, Vishavon, the former IWGP and NJPW Strong Openweight Tag Team Champions, Hiroki Goto and Yoshihashi, they went against House of Tortures, Dick Togo, and Evo, or as I like to call them, Evil Dick. Every woman knows that's the <laughs> worst thing you can experience. Uh, the HLT jumped Vishavon at the bell, as they tend to to do uh they isolated yoshihashi for a bit with the help of goto yoshihashi was able to hold off hot reversing the early advantage this lasted until house of torture took the match to the floor they used their usual offense using the environment outside an eventual hot tag allowed goto to gain some footing over evil uh this was fairly short-lived as hot uh, retook their lead once yoshihashi tagged back in this was goto back in the ring with goto by his side yoshihashi was able to clear the ring of evil and then, then bishamon were able to hit a to uh, dick togo with the show tag to pick up the victory in this one bishamon picking up a win i think they should be in line to get a shot at tmdk for the uh, iwgp tag team championships if they're just going to strictly focus on japan because those two teams have a lot of good chemistry and they have the, they have the best stretch in that four-way at Dominion, so I'm hoping this win is to parlay them into another top shot. What did you think? I, th you know, at the <laughs> this is no disrespect to Bishman at the end of the day. I love those guys. I think they've worked hard in the last couple of years to maintain and and keep that tag team division afloat. Um, but you know, for 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 from my vantage point, from from my perspective, you know, you want to see uh, other teams. In 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 the in the full range for the for the tag team titles and stuff like that, and B TMDK is the newer team being now the champions. But you know, having to now face again the guys who've been the champions basically for the majority of the last two years is like okay, all right, cool. They have good like to your point. They have great chemistry. I'm sure that the match is going to be good. It's just I, I I want to see different matches. That's really what it is. It has nothing to do against the guys, the wrestlers themselves because they're great. They've been great. But it's just like I just want to see fresher, newer matches. But to your point, the chemistry is good between these two. This should put uh, Bishimon in um, in good position to get that tag team title match uh, on whatever the next big show could be. Maybe maybe it'll be on the on um, on the on the later leg of the, the later leg of the tour of the Soul Tour. Um, so we'll we'll see how that works out, and uh, we'll go from there. But I was gonna mention. I was gonna mention. Being that we did see Dick Togo and Evil in this match here, do you see a future in this tag team, SP3? Do you see e Lil Dick becoming... <laughs> becoming <laughs> what? Do you see what? Lil Dick becoming a, 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 a wrench? They're, they're, they're becoming the monkey wrench in the, in the NJPW heavyweight tag team division. I didn't even think of that. I hope not. Um, if there's going to be a tag team from House of Torture, I'm hoping there's no dick. There's no Yujiro involved. I love Yujiro, but I don't love seeing him wrestle. Uh, the the heavyweight tag team needs to be probably Evil and Ren Marie. Not saying that's much better, but that seems like the, <laughs> the most likely to be the heavyweight tag team from House of Torture. Fair enough. Fair enough. Next, we had our final uh, preliminary tag team matchup as it was Los Ingenables de Japón, Tensuyo Naito, and Teton still here. He's still here after Best of Super Juniors, and they're facing just five guys, Takami Shinoku and Yuyu Uomura. I, was, I thought this was an interesting pairing, both uh, babyface teams kind of going against each other here. Teton and Uromura began the matchup with some basic back-and-forth wrestling. Once Takami Shinoku and Naito tagged in, that's when LIJ took control. Uromura stepped in to challenge Naito going at 
going at it with him a bit. Taka tagged in to continue the advance for uh, just five guys, scoring a near fall off a knee strike. A tope from uh, from Teton completely reversed the match's momentum. He throws Taka into the ring and responds with a springboard double stomp to pick up the victory for LIJ. Uh, this was a basic matchup, but I enjoyed it for the most part. Another one I gave two and a half stars to. What do you think about Teton still do, being here? And do you see him having more extended tours with uh, with uh, Los Angeles de Japón over in New Japan Pro Wrestling, despite his obligations, of course, to uh, CMLL? I mean, for for the for the sake of some variation in the junior division, I believe this would be a good thing for Teton to continue to to continue at least to do um bi-monthly loops with uh with yeah. with with New Japan as they as they have a tendency to do with with uh, with foreign talent. So hopefully he sticks around and we get to see different uh different matches with the with, with the other juniors and stuff like that. We'll probably end up seeing a lot of these mixed junior and heavyweight tag matches going forward and things of that nature. It was to your point it was an interesting pairing to see you or you or more in this match. Uh, having to face off with the great Tetsuya Naito. Um, so I'm not too sure if this is a precursor for things to come, SP3. So we will see. <laughs> we shall see. We shall be for sure. Uh, and then we finally got into our first of five title matches on the card for the, the Never Openweight Six-Man Tag Team Championships. It was the new champions, Los Inganables, De Japon, represented by, Her uh, by Hiromo Takahashi, Bushi, and Yoda Suji, going up against the former champions, Hiroshi Tadahashi, Bolton Oleg, and Tori Yano. This matchup started off with uh, Yano and uh, Hiromu going at it, trying to remove the turnbuckle pads as only they can. Only they do, it seems. Uh, they were going back and forth, doing a bit of comedy before LIJ rushed the ring and uh, took the lead on, on Yano, doing some double tags. Double tag into uh, Tadahashi and Suji, both going at it. Suji had Tadahashi coming at him, Bolton Oleg coming at him. In the end, though, it was Bolton Oleg who was the difference maker for the team as he isolated Bushi. He took him down with his uh, rolling uh, rolling spot. By rolling Samoan drop, uh, the old uh, Pittsburgh, what was it, the Green Bay plunge that uh, Mr. Kennedy used to do, and they regained the never open way six man tag team championship. I thought it was significant with Oleg getting the win for for his team instead of one of his uh, more veteran uh, counterparts. And I like the fact that both Tadahashi and Bolton Oleg got into his, Yoda Suji's face like, how you like us now, nigga? How you like us? Like, we, we here. We here. We took back the gold. So uh, they regained the titles. Bolton Oleg already so short into his post-Young Lion graduation is a two-time champion. Two-time never overweight six-man tag team champions. Like I said, I thought this was a lot of fun for the matchup that we got. Uh, Suji and Oleg look, both looked awesome throughout. Everyone else kind of played their role. I gave this match uh, three and a quarter stars. What do you think about the regaining of the tag team titles in the short run for LIJ? Only a week as never overweight six-man tag team champion. Excuse my French. I think it's bullshit. Um, but <laughs> so that's all I have to say about that. Um, dude, like I just don't, I don't get the point. I just, I don't get the point of the title switching. I just know that's that that's always been a critique of mine when it comes to new, any wrestling company. When it's a when it's a quick title change, unless it has to do with injury, unless it has to do with injury, uh, contract negotiations and, shit, and things of that nature, whatever the case is. Um, or, or some sort of quote unquote punishment that's happening in the in, in the back. I don't have I have no need, no need for title changes this fast in less than a week. No need. No, 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 absolutely not. This big suge just got the win, man. He just got the first shot of gold, man. I like, gonna do this to big suge, man. I don't understand. I don't understand. <sighs> Anyways, I get it. They're trying to boost the 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 the, the cash shake. A bolt to no leg, like the dude's huge. You know, I get it, man. He's massive. He's 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 he is an attraction. I get it. I get it. I'm not here to undersell that. You know, wrestling is still a look business. 
But I'd be damned, man. I'd be damned. I just don't. Nah, man. The title change thing, I could do without, man. I do without. <laughs> I, do it. I love your, I love your passion for this. You're like very much upset. I was like, I was like, ah. Yeah, uh, one week. I mean, it's the never overweight six man tag team titles. At the end it, of the but day. it's like, not, uh, <laughs> why? I was why? like, I was like, I'm, I'm not gonna get too uh, flustered about it. It is what it is with the never overweight six man tag team titles at this point, in my opinion. Um, but yeah, I, I, I was, I was a little surprised that they gave the title to Suji only to have him drop it. Yeah, man. Like Big Suji just got the gold, man. Like let him rock with it for a bit. You know what I'm saying? Like, damn, he's gotten all these different opportunities at the global championship, the, the U S championship, the IWGP world Heavyweight championship. He's lost everything. He wins an ever open best six bad tag team championships. And then less than a week later, he loses it. It's like, how are we supposed to believe that this young man can hold on to some gold? <laughs> Like, come on now. Come well, on now. Well, well, he's, he's getting there. He's coming along. He's coming <laughs> along already, man. Come on, give him credit. Um, but yeah, I, I yeah, it was a it was a bit of a shocker, but I understood a little bit later when we got the G1 announcement right, why right. they kind of made that move when you look at the bracket for the play. Uh but before we get into that announcement for the uh, G1 Climax 34 tournament, we have IWGP Junior Heavyweight Tag Team Championships up for grabs. The Bullet Club War Dogs, Clark Connors and Jilla Maloney, defending against TMDK's Kosei Fujita and Robbie Eagles. This matchup was one of the first matches announced for this show, and this was one of the matchups I was very much looking forward to. And boy, oh boy, did it deliver, in my opinion. These four guys really went out there and let it all loose. Uh, the War Dogs established an early lead, taking the fight to the floor after throwing both challengers into the floor seats. Uh, they were brawling all into the crowd and stuff. They took control of this matchup back in the ring. After working over Fujita for a few minutes, War Dogs were interrupted by Robbie Eagles making the tag in. He managed to turn the match around with some high impact uh, holds uh, to answer. The War Dogs hit the ring together, resulting in a short breakdown of the action. All four men in. Fujita lands a big dive to the floor, clearing the ring of Connors. TMDK then focused on Maloney, landed some significant offense and some double team boosts. TMDK managed to lock in double submissions on the champions until Maloney was able to scratch the eyes of Fujita to get uh, Connors free. Once they escaped, uh, they retreated to the floor where Eagles tried to uh, follow up with a dive. But Maloney catches Maloney and Clark Connors catch him, and he gives us one of the nastiest driller killers in quite some time right on the floor. This lets Fujita on his own uh, against the champions. He takes a pair of spears. Fujita manages to kick out, though, getting the crowd really into the last the last few minutes of this matchup. Hitting, he hits a pair of suplexes to reverse the momentum a bit. Once Fujita had momentum on his side, the War Dogs used their numbers to turn the match around yet again. Maloney hits another Driller Killer, this time on Fujita in the ring, setting up the full clip. For the one, two, three, as the Bullet Club War Dogs retain the IWGP Junior Heavyweight Tag Team Championships. This was by far the best match of the show so far. I give it four stars, four pro guys, really delivering a intense, really excellent battle that had a lot of emotion to it. It was very well paced, great matchup, and Fujita and Eagles need to be future tag team champions in this division because they make such a good team. The veteran and the young guy have come together and made a good duo similar to Catch 2-2, in my opinion. What did you think about this? Uh, the result here with the War Dogs retained. As I always like to say, them my dogs for real. At the end of the day, <laughs> they, uh, they did the damn thing. Um, retaining those championships as, as, as long as they continue this trend, as long as they continue uh, down this line with the banger matches on top of the fact that they are the best heel junior tag teams in quite some time. Um, keep keep the train rolling, man. Keep the train rolling. Um, I'm all for it. Uh, these these two young men are super talented at the end of the day. Uh, luckily, New Japan uh, Pro Wrestling was able to retain their services. Um, so that is, that is a plus. And... Um, to your point, man, because I've been said it, you've been said it. Jose Fuji is a star, but him being paid, him being paired with Robbie Eagles is nothing, is nothing short of probably one of the smartest things that they've been able to do. 
um because obviously because of robbie all of robbie's experience um his his world travel and things of that nature obviously his experience in the ring um just getting and 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 koze fujita getting his timing down and this his look is just so unique to 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 to, to his style and everything else in between now and it's like this is him and i like him you know so it's uh it's it's been cool regardless of the regardless of the of the of the loss or not I, I i wholeheartedly agree with you i feel like this junior tag team version of tmdk in the future definitely future super junior tag champs um yeah yeah maybe maybe uh wait the super junior tag league happened this year already no it happens no, right? in the fall i think fall, in right? october yeah these guys tmdk very very early prediction for super junior tag team winners for me Hey, I wouldn't mind that at all, in my opinion. Uh, but it was time. It was time at this point, G News, for the G1 Climax 34 lineup reveal. As we were going to get nine people from the A block, nine people from the B block announced here. And the field, oh man, this is an interesting, probably the most interesting and intriguing field for the G1 Climax in quite some time. As you revealed the, they revealed the A block first, which is going to mm -hmm. consist of Shoto Avinu, the former IWGP World Heavyweight Champion Tensuyo Naito, another former IWGP World Heavyweight Champion and the current Never Openweight uh, Never Openweight Champion at that time, Shingo Takagi. You also got another former IWGP World Heavyweight Champion in Sonata, Great Okan, the King of Pro Wrestling 2024 Champion. You got a former NJPW World Television Champion in Zack Sabre Jr. The current uh, NJPW Strong Openweight Champion, Gabe Kidd, from Pro Wrestling Noah, Jake Lee, the leader of Good Looking Guys, or was the leader of Good Looking Guys, right, as was, he, yes. announced, <laughs> he announced on that day that he was disbanding the group. Interesting mm -hmm. with him being in New Japan's top tournament. And then you have the leader of House of Torture and former IWGP heavyweight champion, Evil. And the 10th spot will, of course, go to the winner of the A Block Qualifier Tournament. What do you think about this A Block first before we get into the B Block? I think that this is a nice mix of talent. I'm very much looking forward to, you know, day one. They already announced it's going to be Naito versus Shingo. That's a matchup mm -hmm. that I got pinpoint on my calendar i'm also looking forward to shingo versus shooter any matchup with zach saber jr gabe kid against zach zach versus naito is always great zach versus shingo is always a banger zach and shoto amino is probably showed us some of shoda's best matches since his return to new japan a lot of interesting uh things here i mean there is evil and I, I, I got asked by somebody, I got asked by my good friend, Mr. Romeo Anthony Colon, my co-host on Rated Raw Review. He was like, who's Jake Lee? And I was like, a bum from Noah. Wow. I know he's won. I wow. know he's won gold. I know he's won wow. gold. All Japan Pro Wrestling. I know he won the GAC Heavyweight Champion. He but what I know of Jake Lee is that he's an anti-draw. He's not a draw. He's wow. an anti-draw. Wow, 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 wow. Shots fired at Jake Lee at the end of the day. The of the day. What do I think about the A block? Uh, to, <laughs> to quote a line and to uh to take some to take some influence and some inspiration from some from some good brothers, uh Steven Larson. I'm about to pour some cold water on some of this stuff right here. <laughs> so unfortunately, as we all know, as we all do nowadays in the age of social media, when you get online, you look at things, things pop up. Yesterday, one of the first things that comes up on my Twitter timeline is a tweet from Shooter Umino, Shoto Umino. Seems like Shooter has a fractured hip and a displaced disc in his lower back. He says, Shooter says, he should be good to go for the G1. I think that is, it's not reasonable. It is not reasonable, especially when it comes to fractured hip. That is not a reasonable timeline. Like we're talking about three to four weeks. He's not going to heal up from all that. If he's got 
any sort of disc problems in his lower back. He shouldn't even be wrestling, let alone taking bumps. Um, and that's from a health perspective, folks. So for me, I think they might have to do some shuffling around here for the A block. Um, I don't think, and this is purely for health reasons, not because Shooter's not a good, great wrestler. Shooter's, Shooter's an awesome wrestler. We love Shooter here. The top shots up. Ba-dap. One time. Um, <laughs> uh, I don't think he's going to be cleared, man. Honestly, honestly, I don't think I don't think he's going to be clear medically to go. Um, and that's sad because he, he he was probably the favorite to win this. He was, uh, he was the, absolutely the A block. Yeah, absolutely, he's the favorite, man. But I don't just from a medical standpoint, dude. I don't think he's going to be able to go. There's just no way. There's just no way. Not with the kind of injuries that he sustained, mind you. I I don't necessarily know how he sustained the injuries. I don't think it was in the ring. Um. So yeah. So. Unfortunately, that has happened. He 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 posted the photos of his X-ray on his on his um on his Twitter uh, yesterday, and I was like, "Dude said that he should be ready to go for the G1," and I was like, "What are you talking about, man? What are you talking about? There's just no way. There's no way. I'm sorry, man. Like you're 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 you're. I I would imagine he's gonna try everything in his power to get back into the ring." By the time the G1 rolls around. But brother, just call it, man. You'll have much more time, many more years to win a G1. Take the take the hit this year. Let someone take your place. Get healthy and go from there, man. I just I wouldn't want anything to happen to him, which would cause him long-term damage or harm. Um, take the time off, man. Heal up. We'll see you next year. Go around. I yeah, I, I think it's super ambitious for him to think that he's going to be able to, to go for the G1 uh, with the kind of injuries that he has. So, yeah, I just wanted to pour that bucket of ice water on this whole thing. <laughs> so, That's tough. That's a tough pill to swallow. It's a tough I'm, build, I'm, I'm, hope, I'm hoping he's got the Seth Rollins, John Cena gene of quick recovery <laughs> time. Yeah, the hip stuff is tricky, right? Because with the, with, the, with, the, with the disc stuff, you know, you can – you can fluff it up in the ring without him having to take so many back bumps and things of that nature. But the hip thing, that that's just you that nah 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 nah. I wouldn't mess with it if I was him. I, I'm just that's just me. I wouldn't mess with it if I was him. Um, but yeah, just wanted to say that. Um, Jake, the Jake Lee thing, he's a bum from Noah. God damn, I still can't get over that. <laughs> Did I say something wrong? Did I say something wrong? Yes, former GAC heavyweight champion. I said his accolades. He former former triple. He's a former triple crown champion in all Japan pro wrestling. Great stuff, yeah, man. That's Great accomplishment. That's, that's that's prestige right there, bro. Triple crown champions don't come don't come walking through the door all the time. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. Um, but I always got to give a a, a a hearty shout out to the main man, Gabe Kid. Gabe Kid put on one hell of a match. Versus Kaito Kiyomiya, uh, one of my Noah matches of the year. I watched yeah. it. I watched it uh, the night before we're recording this, and yeah, it was amazing. It's probably it's Gabe, probably my Gabe, match of the week on my start. Gabe Kid is slowly becoming. I mean, he's always he's been, he's been much he's been must watch for a while now, right? But he's also becoming. He's, he, he's like through through the half a year of 2024. He's mm-hmm. my breakout star of the year. Without a question, bro. And he's slowly becoming, he's slowly doing what he said he was going to go out there to do. He's good. He's the, the whole Cody Rose line of being undeniable. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's who Gabe Kidd is becoming at the end of the day. <laughs> um, and it's great to see, honestly, man. And yeah, man, he's just stepping into his own and doing a damn thing and he's killing it across every single company he's doing when he when he does uh promotional stuff it's 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 always comedy it's always top notch entertainment like he's he's ready to go <laughs> man i love this kid i really really do um he is he is definitely um a great addition to the wrestling landscape uh haven't necessarily He's a very unique soul, and, and we got to appreciate him while we got him. So uh, big shout-out to Gabe, Gabe Kidd. Maybe, maybe out of this with 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 uh, with Shooter's injury, he might he might come out of this. I don't know, uh, but we'll we'll see. But uh, I, I expect big, great, good things from Gabe Kidd in this particular 
uh, G1 in this block. If anyone gets a great match out of Jake Lee, it's going to be Gabe Kidd. <laughs> that's, my, that's, my, that that's, that's my true. right there. It's B3. <laughs> that's my dog for real. Uh, then we move over to the B block. Where we this one is wide open. Yeah. I don't know who's coming out <laughs> of this B block because it's three guys. Remember the the format that was announced at Dominion that it's going to be the top court scorer moves on to the semifinals, and then number two and three in each block will move on to the uh, playoffs. So we got three guys that come out of this, and it could be any of these three. Mm-hmm. But uh, we got El Fantasmo, former NJPW Strong and IWGP Tag Team Champion. You got Hiroki Goto, former IWGP Intercontinental Champion, multi-time IWGP Tag Team Champion, and of course uh, went to the finals of the New Japan Cup where he faced Yoda Suji, who is mm-hmm. in the – B block as well, the winner of the New Japan Cup this year. His fellow uh, Do- NJ Do- NJ Dojo uh, graduate Yu 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 Omura, former King of Pro Wrestling 2024 champion, is here. We got the current reigning NJPW World Television Champion Jeff Cobb, who's gonna be in the same block as his United Empire brother in Hanare. Meanwhile, you have the IWGP Global Heavyweight Champion, David Finley, who will be in the same block as he is the leader of the Bullet Club with Bullet Club adjacent uh, member, a uh, House of Torture member, Ren Narita. And then the big one, the reason why I messaged J News and was like, this is what makes me hype for the G1 Climax. It totally, like, I don't know how I would feel about this block if it just included the first eight names and someone else in this ninth spot, but they instantly made me, this is the most interesting block of the of the G1 because it has AEW and DDT pro wrestler Konosuke Takeshita is in New Japan pro wrestling for the G1 Climax. I was both very, very happy, very, very excited for the G1 once I saw Takeshita's name, and I was also questioning why the fuck didn't they give him a shot at the IWGP World Heavyweight Championship at d- Double or Nothing if he's going to be in New Japan's top tournament. That don't make too much sense, Dave Meltzer. Your report that the only reason they didn't give him the shot is because he's a DDT wrestler, and then he shows up in the G1. That's just something, something ain't mapping. That math ain't mapping, but all good, all good for me here. Takeshita, oh man, I can't wait for Takeshita versus Suji, Takeshita versus Cobb, uh, Cobb versus Hanare, Cobb versus Suji again. They had one of the best matches of the New Japan Cup tournament. So Suji and ELP is going to be great. Suji and Goto in the New Japan Cup finals was amazing. And like I said, this feels like the most unpredictable between the two blocks of this G1. What do you think about the lineup? So... I must say, when you went out of your way to send me a message and tell me, yo, did you see the news? And I was like, what news? The G1 news. Nah. He was like, I'm not going to ruin SP3 tells me I'm not going to ruin it for you. Go look it up. And I'm there like, okay, whatever. I'll take my time with this. So literally go on. I didn't even go to the, I didn't even go searching. I just put the, I just put the, the Twitter on. I launched it and there it was. The first thing I see is a solo poster of Konosuke Takeshita as a participant in the B block of the G1 Climax 34. Let me say this, man. Let me say this. Konosuke Takeshita, I think most people will agree, most wrestling fans would agree, is a very talented in-ring performer, right? Uh, I think most people would say that. I think, secondly, people would also say, and dare I say, confirm that that Konosuke Takeshita is one of the hardest hitting MFers in all of professional wrestling. I think most people would confirm that. Um, so, strong style is the name of the game, and I don't think that we are going to lack any of that in the B block. <laughs> so. Uh, no, no, no. With these with these uh with these guys who are basically all of them outside of outside of Goto maybe in their prime and whatnot. So you know it 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 it, it, it like you said it's hard to pick one in this whole field. But the B block specifically, three out of the four 
of our predestined Riwa musketeers are in this block, right? Right. Uh, which one of these guys is going to be able to show up and show out is really more the question out of this block for me. We've been riding the big suits train for the last year and a half, which is which has been warranted. Uh, I've been the captain. He should have <laughs> beat the Nada. Jesus, I will stand on ten toes down on that. Uh, but does 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 uh, you know, who else steps up, bro? Does you more step up in this case, right? Does Narita step up? Uh, you know, because shooters out, somebody's got to step up. Shoot, I, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about this with shooter out. At the end of the day, does Narita step out? You know what I'm saying? Does Does Takesta just take over? Because I be damned, DDT or no DDT, Takesta is the alpha. He is the prime directive in this B block right now. Um, and and for for people not to think that way, I think is asinine. Now the first thing that I did think. When I saw the poster, and I was like, damn, he's losing that seven man ladder match. <laughs> I mean, they kind of told us who's winning that seven man ladder, that six man ladder match. Oh, for man. They told I us, like, man, he's losing the ladder match. match. <laughs> I was like, God damn, that sucks. Um, but it should, I mean, sidebar, it should be Jack's, it should be Jack's coronation. Over at that seven man ladder match or whatever, I'm sure he'll do some some more crazy shit. I think that's just where where Jack's brain is right now. But all for that at the end of the day. Uh, but yeah, man, back to catch stuff. Listen, man, it'll be some. It'll be some, man. It'll be some. So uh, we'll 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 see how it all breaks down. Uh, definitely exciting uh, to see him as as he's 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 not even in the qualifying matches. He's in the block. So it's like I would I would have I would have um being that he lost to Mox in that in that uh in that uh, qual whatever they call what do they call that match? Eliminator. The eliminator, eliminator match in that eliminator match, I would have figured, okay, if they're gonna if they're gonna try to squeeze him into the tournament, put him in the qualifier, have him win out there, then join the block. You know, just the extra hurdle, right? Because it's always been seen as New Japan Pro Wrestling treating uh, DDT not even as a little brother, just as the peasant, as the peasant side of of, of, of Japanese pro wrestling. <laughs> so have him even even uh, do uh, jump the extra jump the extra hurdle, but they didn't do that. They put him in the block, so that's good. At the end of the day, uh, but uh, yeah, man, I think uh, like you said, I think this is the wild card of two blocks. Um, so we'll see, man. We'll see. I think everybody's got a decent uh, a decent shot. At it, um, if they're going to mistreat Konosuke Takeshita in the G1, uh, Gato, I'm telling you right now, fam, <laughs> I'll take a flight to Japan, brother. You're gonna see me, you better not. You, know what I'm you better not. Uh, Takeshita better make the playoffs at least. At you the very least, I'll be knocking on that door, Gato, playoffs. and you're gonna be running for your life, fam. Ain't no switchblade going around here, man. You know what I'm saying? Shoot, <laughs> shoot. Well, let's. Look at the lineup for the play in as the final spots in the A block and the B block will be determined by a mini tournament. Uh, mm -hmm. six people for each each of these uh tournament play ins for the A block. You have Tomohiro Ishii, I was like, wow, uh, mm -hmm. Yoshihashi, a, a stalwart in the G1. You got right. Callum Newman, who's been uh staking his claim that he wants to be in the G1. Kenta, and Yujiro Takahashi. Meanwhile, in the B block qualifier, you have Hiroshi Tanahashi, which I was like, really? The president? Yeah. Yeah, Toriyanu, <laughs> Oleg, Oleg Bolton, Bolton Oleg. Uh, you got Satoshi Kojima, Tai Chi, and TJP, who's also been staking his play for the G1. I love Chris Charlton. Shout out to him who explained why all of these guys were in there. They had losing records. Uh, the guys mm -hmm. that are usually in the G1, like Ishii, like Yoshiashi, Kenta, Chase, Yujiro, Tanahashi, Yano, Taichi, all had losing records in the G1 last, last year. year. Yeah. Meanwhile, everybody else has not had the best singles records throughout the last two years. So that's why they're in this tournament here. So I'm going to put you on the spot, Jay News. Here sure. is the first, the bracket. For the play-in in the A block, Tomohiro Ishii and Kenta 
we'll move on to the next round as the uh, kind of the seniors, the veterans of this sure. uh, this uh, part of the qualifier. Meanwhile, you got Yoshihashi versus Chase Owens this Saturday. Uh, uh, yes, I think it's this Saturday, yeah. June 22nd, as well as Callum Newman versus Yujiro Takahashi. So first, Yoshihashi and Chase, who you got? Uh, I'm going to go with Yoshihashi. I agree. I'm good. No, actually, I'm going to go with Chase Owens. I'm going to go I'm with go Chase Yoshi. Owens there. Uh, Callum Newman versus Yujiro. I'm going with Newman. So am I. So then you got, for me, Chase Owens versus Ishii. Chase Owens has pulled off multiple upset victories over Ishii. And you got a battle of chaos members, Yoshihashi, yes. Tomohiro Ishii. Who you got? <sighs> Such a tough one, but I'm gonna go with the Stone Pit Bull, man. I'm gonna go with Tomohiro Ishii in his last G1, uh, or at, the, at least what I would think is would be his last G1. But I would go with Tomohiro Ishii um, to win over Yoshiashi. I'll go. I'll go with Ishii over Chase Owens, and then we both is uh, Callum Newman versus Kenta. Who you got, Newman mm -hmm. or Kenta? I got, I got Callum Newman. I got Callum Newman as well. And then in the finals, we both got Ishii, Callum Newman. I'm going with Callum Newman to make his first G1. Same. Same. So here's the thing, right? They st they already started the bubble. Callum Newman and Tetsuya Naito, that one-on-one -on -one match, right, where Naito gave him all that respect after the match. And I was like, oh, I see where they're going. <laughs> I see where they're going. And I was like, look, at the end of the day, if you put Newman in the A block, right, uh, the current A block justification for the person to take all the losses would probably be Jake Lee. But at the end of the day, since you still want to have that partnership with Noah, you don't necessarily want to completely ruin Jake Lee. So, you know, Callum Newman still being the younger of all the other participants, him being in the A block. Him still put he's he's still gonna be able to show off his skills and 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 uh and put people on notice at the end of the day. But he should be the one to take the bulk of the losses in the block, um, while still um coming off uh very well in the majority of his matches, especially when we're gonna see him versus Tetsuya Naito too in this block. <laughs> So, um, at least it's gonna be my... much more competitive than yeah. Dominion. That's for exactly. Sure. So, uh, we'll see that. Then, the B block qualifier tournament you got Hiroshi Tanahashi and Tai Chi, two veterans of the G1, getting their advancements <laughs> to the next round. And then you got this Sunday, June 23rd, Toriyanu and Bolton Oling, two halves of the Never Open Way Six Man Tag Team Champions with Hiroshi Tanahashi. And you also got Satoshi Kojima versus TJP, the leader of United Empire. Who you got, Yano or Bolton Oleg? I have Bolton Oleg. I got Oleg as well. Uh, who you got, Kojima versus TJP? I got TJP. Same, same. I don't think Koji makes it out this year. Then we got in the next round, Tadahashi versus Bolton Oleg on one side, Tai Chi versus TJP. That's going to be on July 3rd. Tadahashi versus Bolton Oleg. I'm going with Oleg to pull off the biggest win of his career. Same, same here. I'm going with Oleg for the win over Tana. Then Tai Chi versus TJP. I will go with Tai Chi there. I'm going with TJP. That is fair. So we got different finals of the B block qualifier. Bolton Oleg versus TJP for you. Bolton Oleg mm -hmm. versus Tai Chi for me. Either way, I think I'm going with Bolton Oleg to make, make it into the G1. And I'm going with TJP. I think TJP outsmarts Bolton Oleg, being that he is the most senior uh, in this. And he he solidifies himself even more as the new leader of the United Empire. I'm not saying that if he wins out B block, that he's going the, the B block qualifier, that he's going to be the guy to take the most losses in the B block period. No, I'm not saying that at all. I'm saying he wins. He wins here. He enters the B block. He puts on competitive matches. He doesn't lose the majority of his matches. He might end up even or maybe like one under or whatever. Um, but uh, strong showing for the new leader of the United Empire is really more the story, I think, uh, for TJP going into the G1. 
That is fair. So we got two different winners from the B block qualifier, the same winner from the A block qualifier. We shall see how it go, all goes down. The finals of the qualifier tournaments will be on July 5th. And we'll talk about that here on the True Hill Heat YouTube channel as always. But back into the action at NJPW Seoul Never Open Weight Championship up for grabs. Shingo Takagi has a rematch defending against Hanare after their double knockout finish at Dominion. And they just completely started off where they left off at Dominion. They immediately go into a strike battle that slowly, that slowly escalated. Shingo got the first advantage. He started laying in more strikes in the corner as, as Hanare was headbutting his punches. Hanare answered Shingo with a Samoan drop. He followed with some more strikes and a big old powerbomb. A DDT from Shingo put him in the driver's seat. He followed up with a huge superplex and then a series of lariats, but Hanare refused to fall down. Eventually, Shingo ran at Hanare, and Hanare snuffed him as we got a double knockdown once again, but both men were able to make it to the feet. They start slugging it out, trading strikes. Shingo won that out by suddenly hitting the last of the dragon, but he couldn't capitalize. Hanare was able to fire back with a giant strike, that leaping headbutt. Uh, keeping both men grounded. This time, they both beat the double count. Uh, Shingo dropped Hanare with a pair of pumping bombers both times. Hanare was able to kick out. After kicking out, Hanare hits the streets of rage for a big uh, kick out of his own. He hits a headbutt. A rugby kick from Hanare resulted in another Hanare near fall. Shingo attempted to cut off Hanare, but Hanare caught Shingo's arms, hits a uh, basically like a Kamagoye leaping headbutt, and then gets the one, two, three. I was very surprised that was the result here. I thought that if Hanare was going to win the title, they would do it on the big event, uh, Dominion, but they did it here, saved it for one week, so Shingo was able to get that defense record under his belt before losing the title, and Hanare wins his first gold in New Japan Pro Wrestling, and he is the new Never Overweight Champion heading in to the G1 Climax 34 tournament. What did you think, Hanare? your new Never Overweight Champion. This match was splendid, splendid violence as we've become accustomed to with these two gentlemen. I gave it four and a quarter stars. What do you think about Hanare, new champ? I thought the way you put it, splendid violence makes the most sense from the from the clips that I saw online. Um, new Japan's really, really good about showing a good chunk of these matches on their Instagram, <laughs> Instagram feeds. So I got a good seven minutes of this stuff. And I was like, oh, this is, wow, okay. So, yeah, they're keeping this never open weight energy up. So I, I appreciated that. Um, Hanare finally getting some gold after all these years in New Japan. Um, him re-signing recently within the last couple of months as well um, is is a welcome sight to see, man. Not no, Obviously, I'm never going to take anything away from Shingo Takagi. Who would I? I am no one to take anything away from Shingo Takagi. But at the end of the day, he will be in the Owen tournament uh, coming up on AEW television. Obviously, he's, go he's going to be in the G1 as well. Uh, so we will see some more bangers out of the great Shingo Takagi. But this was a, a staple win, uh, 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 a, a rise in tide for the great uh, Hanare now, uh, all the mana that he has been showing. Uh, for himself and his people, uh, first Maori champion ever um, in history of anything. And brother, keep representing, man. Keep doing the damn thing. Uh, proud of you, man. Uh, from where I saw you come out of the Fale Dojo, because he came out of the Fale Dojo first before he went to the No Gay Dojo. Um, and to to see uh, to see him go from like young lion Hanare to gentrified Hanare to the new version of Hanare that we see now uh, has been quite the transformation. Uh, props to you, man. Proud of you, brother. Keep doing a damn thing. Uh, you get a vote of confidence from me going from here on out. Anything Hanare does is must watch. So props to Hanare for the win here, being a never open weight champion and continuing the strong lineage of that rough and tough, strong style in new japan pro wrestling indeed agree with you there 
Next up, we have IWGP Global Heavyweight Championship up for grabs. David Finley making the first defense of his second reign against the former IWGP World Heavyweight Champion Sonata. I love the story that why we got this matchup so soon thereafter. Finley is on a quest to redeem himself for all his major losses. He got he got his receipt against uh, Will Ospreay winning the Global Heavyweight Championship after Ospreay beat him in the G1 last year. He beat uh, Nick Nemeth, who beat him for his first reign of the Global Heavyweight Championship. And now he wants his receipt on Sonata, who beat him in the finals of the New Japan Cup last year. And they had a splendid matchup. They really built and built and built. We got to see Sonata using his technical proficiency. Uh, David Finley, more of a brawler, but a high impact moves uh, through out this matchup, whether it be power bombs, you had Sonata using his speed and athleticism with some planchas. Finley would block uh, block certain move, uh, block the moonsault uh, with his knees, res resetting the matchup. And he didn't even use any cheating from Gato, even though Gato was on the outside. Uh, he catches uh, Sonata for the Shining Wizard and plants him with the power bomb. And then he finally follows up with the overkill to pick up the victory. This match went 25 minutes. Like I said, it was building and building, but the crowd was into it towards the end of the matchup, especially. And Finley retains the Global Heavyweight Championship. I felt like this was Finley's best match since Wrestle Kingdom. I would gave this one four stars. Really damn good. Great matchup between these two men who have developed good chemistry with one another. What do you think about Finley retaining against a former IWGP World Heavyweight Champion and your least favorite wrestler beating your favorite wrestler? Yeah. Look, man, um, I'm just happy to see Sonata back in the ring, dog. That's all I got to say. That's all I got to say. That's all I got to say. Fair enough. Uh, and finally, we had the main event of NJBW. So it was for the first time the IWGP Junior Heavyweight Championship being defended in a steel cage matchup. El Desperado, the winner of the Best of Super Juniors 31 tournament, challenging show, the man that beat him for the title all the way back at New Beginning. And, of course, Show was trying with his shenanigans, trying to bring a wrench into the ring, into the into this whole thing. They tried to sneak in chairs. They tried to sneak in the house of torture. The referees had to stop him and make sure everything was good. He was wasting so much time. This was ridiculous. Um, and I, I wanted to really like this match more than I did, but uh, why do we need referee bumps in a steel cage matchup? Why do we still need House of Torture to get involved in a steel cage matchup? Does not make any sense to me, despite Hong Tai coming out and making the save and helping out El Desperado. I was very annoyed with a lot of this matchup because I was like, y'all are totally defeating the purpose of the steel cage matchup. But Sonata was able to turn things around using the steel chairs that House of Torture brought into the into the ring to his advantage. In the end, he used his super pinche into the pinche loco to finally regain the IWGP Junior Heavyweight Championship. Big celebration for El Desperado closing out the show. And Desperado says he wants to start off this reign on the right foot. And he's going to choose his first challenger for the title. And it's none other than the man he defeated in the semifinals of the Best of Super Juniors 31 tournament, his former tag team partner and stablemate in Suzuki-Goon, Doki. Doki getting the first opportunity. He's going to be facing El Desperado for the championship at the NJPW Soul finale coming up on on July 5th, which is going to have the finals of the A and B block qualifying tournament. And you also got a big match here with El Desperado defending the IWGP uh, Junior Heavyweight Championship against Doki. But this was all about El Desperado finally regaining the gold and bringing some stability to this damn Junior Heavyweight division that show has held hostage for the past couple of months. Very happy for, for Desperado, but the match itself gave it the stars listen, listen man listen at the end of the day they 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 as a new japan pro wrestling they as in the ace president 
kept on saying over the last couple of weeks they were trying to get rid of the house of torture they didn't want any more of these house of torture shenanigans and guess what we're getting more house of torture shenanigans so they care they're kayfabing us to death at this point because it seems like they want to continue down this damn line with this nuisance this annoyance this goddamn arp albatross that is the house of torture continuing to riddle our matches with this disgusting and utterly unnecessary interference man it's just it's just I don't, I don't understand i don't understand i just don't understand i didn't end it um they're all a joke they're all a bunch of clowns i don't like any of them not one not one man not one um uh, shout i used to out. really like shell too huh yeah i, yeah, really I think, like I think we all too. did i think we all did and 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 the heel master was the heel master before he went to the hostile torture at the end of the day and now he's just another clown I don't appreciate that shit at all. I just don't. I just don't. Um, uh, shouts to Jose El Desperado for becoming the uh, uh, IWGP Junior Heavyweight Champion. Um, well deserved after his uh, best of Super Junior win. Um, his match coming up with Doki should be quite interesting with their contrast of styles. Uh, so hopefully that goes down and we get to see a barn burner of a match. Um, a lot of emotion. Uh, with these two men having the kind of history that they do, um, so yeah, 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 man, that's a that's a that was a good first. It was a it was a good first pick for Despe to pick Doki as his challenger. Doki came out, said his piece. They gonna go at it. July fifth, we gonna get it. So uh, that's the way it's gonna go down. And uh, yeah, yeah. Then after July fifth, the the junior guys uh should be able to get some time off <laughs> so uh get some time off and chill at home watching the g1 exactly. with the rest of us but el desperado new junior heavyweight champion once again very happy for him but that brings us to a close on njpw soul review uh since i watched the full show i'll give it a thumbs up thumbs down thumbs in the middle give it a thumbs up show I gave it a 7 out of 10. Not the best New Japan show, but a show that had a lot of newsworthy things. Like we said, we talked about the G1 probably more than we talked about any individual matchup because that was the big thing that was announced on this show. But you had three new champions in El Desperado, Hanare, and Tadahashi, Oleg, and Yano winning the Never Open Way Six-Man Tag Team Championships. You had some great matches with... Uh, so I thought Sonata and Finley was great, as well as the junior heavyweight tag team matchup, as well as Hanare and Shingo. Those three matches would be the ones to go out of your way to watch. My match of the night, though, goes to Hanare versus Shingo Takagi. Those two guys beating the hell out of each other. I could see it 10 times a week. Even though I see it twice in one week, I will see it 10 more times in one week if I could. And uh, my MVP for the show, El Desperado. LVP for the show. House of fucking torture. House of fucking <laughs> torture. Get them the fuck off my TV, please. I beg of you. Uh, but that brings us to a close on our NJPW Soul Review. J News, let everyone know where they can follow you on social media and when they will see you again. Uh, you can follow me on the social media on via the Twitter machine at John L Y F N M G. Uh, check me out there. Uh, I'm always posting. Uh, about when we are doing our episodes of True Heel Heat, reviewing all the New Japan stuff. Uh, I also post movie trailers and show trailers of stuff that I like at the end of the day and that I'll review later on on the letterbox. And uh, I'll start on my Rotten Tomatoes uh, journey soon enough. So we'll, we'll, I'll keep you guys posted on all that. Um, so yeah, there's that. You can catch me on there. You can also catch me on the Instagram, underscore J O N J Y. Uh, check me out. Um, and, uh, as I used to say, and I still say, you know, I love to interact with the folks. So shoot me some comments or whatever, and we'll have a uh, friendly discourse. And if you don't want to have friendly discourse, I'll stick my foot in your ass. It's cool. It's cool. You know what I'm saying? It don't matter to me. You know, it's, it's all love either way. You know what I'm saying? So, it's all love either way. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's what I'm here for. You know? so, it, it is what it is. Yeah. You can find me on the Twitter machine at True Hill SV3. Follow the gang, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok at True Hill Heat, patreon.com 
four slash True Hill Heat. When we're not here live, we're not here for a pre-recorded video. That is the best place where you can support us. Three dollars a month gets you exclusive content. Like right now, you could check out my Despy Invitational uh, review that I reviewed the Big Show Mystery Card by El Desperado from Kurgan Hall. Go over and check that out, and check out all the great content we got on the channel right now. If you like pay-per-view reviews like this one, check out our WWE Clash at the Castle Scotland review that we did earlier this week. Check out AE Ramble with myself and Jimmy Macaram reviewing AEW Dynamite from this week with the start of the Owen Hart Cup. So check all that out. Drop the thumbs up on it. But until next time, this is Jay News. It is me. It is me. Your True Hill Phenom SP3. This has been our NJPW Soul Day 1 review. We are signing off until next time.